All right. Good morning, everyone. We have the lovely Wendy Morgan with us today, as I have let everybody know in excitement. Now, let me tell you a little bit about her. She is creator of the I Am a Gappy process. This, um, this process in which one identifies and removes the emotional cellular charges that are holding you in a lower vibration. And let me tell you, she knows her stuff. And then I'm going to go to another place where she's a very wonderful educator, and that is in stem cell. And to give a quote that she said, she said, we can decrease the damage in our DNA and activate and express genes that encourage and bring about more health, more energy, and more clarity. Like, who can ask for anything more than that? But as wonderful as she is, she has one more thing that we want today from her, and that is that she is a spiritual mentor. She's very gifted, especially in the fourth dimension energy, but today she's willing to share with us a conversation on creation versus manifestation. And here is Wendy. Much, Nikki. It's such a pleasure being here and um, I've been part of your beautiful group for a while and have some beautiful souls here and I love it how we're all connecting back together once again. Thank you again. Great having you. Absolutely. So would you like me just to dive right in or? Yes, you know, there's so many of uh, the people that are on here and so many people that are around me when they find out about me, they ask, um, and they usually ask quietly, but they want to know um, as much of a big picture as they can, and they want to know about manifestation. So I thought your talk on creation versus manifestation would um, help that understanding and ownership and exercise. Absolutely. Yes. So we've all basically been, you know, at one point we've, we've picked up a book, we've gone to workshops, uh, we've you know, done webinars, whatnot, as far as how to manifest. I mean, who doesn't want to go ahead and learn how to, quote unquote, attract uh, more things into our life. But that is actually the old paradigm. And we're actually already stepped past that threshold into the new paradigm where it's no longer manifestation, it's now creation. So what's the difference? Well, with, manif with manifestation, we basically we were taught what to basically uh, to align ourselves, to align our vibration with the very thing that we want. So mm -hmm. therefore we can attract it to ourselves. And we, you know, I remember, you know, going through this so many times, having post-it notes of affirmations just to bring myself up into that, you know, same vibration as such. And, um, you know, post notes on the refrigerator and, you know, constantly trying to do, you know, basically what is that? It's trying to go and keep our thought system basically, you know, we're, so we're kind of reprogramming our mind. So therefore we're in a more positive thought. So we're in more of a higher vibration, it's more of a vibration of the thing that we desire. And I remember then again, we always had to think about, I remember I read one of the books I read says, think about yellow butterflies, you know, all day long, <laughs> thinking about yellow butterflies. And which is a really good segue because truth, thought is what your focus and focus guys is your superpower. This is truly, we have been so downgraded and so um, oppressed through the lifespan of humanity. We've actually been told some things that aren't true. And it's actually keeping our energy and our power actually suppressed. And um, so with now that we've crossed over into the new paradigm, you know, we're all going through this ascension process. We're right now separating third and fourth dimension. It's going to take a while. It's not like tomorrow. It's going to take a couple of years or more, 10 years. Nevertheless, um, now we're in learning how to be that creator. And creator is way different. Instead of saying, I'm going to put myself into that vibration and try to attract. In truth, you create everything in your environment. So to kind of understand that a little bit, we have to kind of break down a few walls that which are programs that were fed to us that which we agreed to believe in our whole entire lifetime. I was just going to say, I'm sure that's been a long time since we've been living in that mindset that you're talking about that we have to change right yes yes yeah we've been much um de-empowered uh 
for good re for for reasons for those dark energies that basically in control of our world you know don't want to keep have us be in our power right because gosh we could just take over and have our fun with this world but thank goodness we are now awakening you know we are all uh coming away coming alive and realizing hey wait a minute we are way more than what we have been led to believe and yeah. uh now, like they say in Matrix, you know, some rules are meant to be bent, some rules are meant to be broke. And we're here to break a lot of the foundational programs that which we were led to believe, be led to believe, yes. So, so most of the time, all of us, we kind of just look at ourselves like, you know, we're a human body, right? That's what I am. I'm a human body. And ideally, if you're here, you know, and you listen to Nikki, you believe that actually you are a spiritual being having a human experience. And yes, absolutely. But still, nevertheless, the programs of I'm the human body, I have a spirit that's in my body, which is associated with my soul, and I have a higher self. And then there's God, the creator. And all of those are, you can think about as levels, right? Levels of energy. But in essence, what it is, it's segregating one from the other. First thing we need to do is break down those walls break down those segregating labels and just realize I am. I am a soul. I am the spirit. I am God. I am the human being. I am the whole thing and the whole enchilada. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, when you first notice or realize that you're not on the outside of that circumference of real life and, you know, you move into it and you realize I am, that's a big world shaking you know, yeah. and we've also been programmed. How dare you say I am God? You know, so the analogy I love to give is, you know, the water that's in the reservoir or, you know, beneath our ground. Can you separate that water from the water that flows out of your tap? You really can't. It's the same water, just as the same energy that has created all that there is, all that is, all that ever will be, including yourself. You cannot separate that energy from who you are. So, you know, to say I am God, not coming from the ego, right? So the ego is a, is a, is a separate space of form and function to keep this human body healthy, alive within this um, physical realm, you know, yeah. and that is fading. That, that, that ego used to be in the, the, the helm of the driver's seat. And that is, we've been feeling it for the last couple of years, right? That's been fighting for the past 10 yep. years because um, it knows it's slowly going into the back seat and eventually it's going to be just fizzled out because it is it is of lower vibration and you, your conscious self is now taking the front seat. So yeah, thank you. Know, even um, John Lennon mentioned that yeah. at least two decades ago. Oh, really? I didn't know that. What did he, what did he say? Um, he talked on I am. Oh, yes. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. Now, now, I'm, now I'm intrigued. I got to check out John Lennon. <laughs> yes. So he, you know, those, even though it sounds really new to all of us here, it's nothing new what you're saying. All of this is all, the, all this intelligence you're sharing with us today has been here for the ages. Yeah, exactly. I think Neil Gall Goddard, Goddard. I yes. a friend of I was I was speaking to, with one of my clients and she goes, Oh my gosh, she goes, You must be a person who studies Neil Goddard. And I'm like, Who? Yes. And so she basically filled me in a little bit about what he speaks. It's like, oh my dear Lord, it's like he's speaking through me that I've never read him, never heard of him. And you're yes. right. This is this has been around for a long time. It's just a matter of where, you know, are who's listening? Who's listening? Well, we're all listening, Wendy. So tell us. <laughs> So there's two things I really want to bring up just for those that kind of feel uncomfortable about really acknowledging that you are a co-creator is that, you know, in the beginning there was God and it doesn't matter what religion that you have ever been doctrined with. That's what everything starts out with and God created everything. So that means God created heaven. And if those of you believe in hell, fine. Uh, God created angels for those, degree, which is in my, in our world, higher light beings and God created demons, lower vibrational beings. God created happiness. God created joy. God created fear. God created hatred. God created life. God created death. God created everything. So really what makes a difference within us is our programmed judgment, such as we're kind of programmed 
to judge certain feelings as bad and not to deal with, and they become a faux pas and we have to push them aside. We just don't want to look at them. It's just, it's ugly and it's just a low vibration. But what we're actually doing is we're teaching our children or what, as we were taught as children, that we don't know how, therefore, how to deal with those feelings. We don't know how to process those feelings. And when you don't have process anything, then it really gets lodged in the cellular body, cellular memory, and then it causes extra problems. So regardless, when it comes to a spiritual per, uh, perspective, right, our spiritual perspective goes and looks through our body and goes, oh my gosh, I feel joy. It's so exciting, but it doesn't have the word joy. It just has the vibration of joy, which I think is um, well, like 728 Hertz or something or love, which is four, 548 Hertz. You know, yeah. it just feels that hurts of, oh, I love this from the soul perspective. And yet at the same time down at the fear or the anger or the hatred perspective, that again is a very low vibration of what's 15 Hertz or what have you. And again, it's just a vibration to the soul. And it's like, Oh God, I'm feeling this. It's just an experience. We, the human is the one that has the judgment of that experience is good. And that experience is bad. I'm kind of going into the, I'm agape, but I will swing back around. No worries. Um, but nevertheless, like give you an example of, of just really simple um, uh, programs. If you're in a country and you eat, you know, the food and you're really happy and if you burp out loud, oh, that is a compliment, right? Because they know that you were hungry, the food was so great, and you just ate it so fast, and so you end up belching, and that's a great compliment. But if you did that here in America, man, that is poor manners. That's, mm -mm, nope, nope, you're, mm, yeah, right, great, because we have to have manners, quiet, move away, cover our mouth with our napkin, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. All of it is a program judgment, what's accepted and what's not everything so once we bypass that as far as the judgment and we're just left with the vibration now things are a lot easier and more understandable so now i'm going to kind of segue to another side so if you will i'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey so from the perspective of god the creator where another aspect of our self lies in our in the eternal realm our eternal self because yes, there's lots of aspects of us that we're experiencing right now. I'm experiencing being Wendy and I'm probably experiencing being Tom and I'm experiencing being Joy over in India, what have you. I have many facets of myself that are in many different places, having many different experiences. But nevertheless, the what, what Spirit shared with me about two to three years ago is that our, our self in the eternal realm. Now, that can, can kind of like sticky because I'm not talking about an individuality in the eternal realm. I am Nikki. Nikki is me. We're all one at the same time. We're all part of everything. And everything is a part of us. Everything that ever was created, everything that will be created is still part of us. And it's like, we, we can feel all these energies of creation throughout us mm -hmm. to create the third dimensional realm and this physical body, our eternal bodies basically focused into our center just focused a lot of energy, a lot of photons to create a density, which created this body. So this body is just an extension of our eternal self with a lot of density, but to bring it into a lower vibration, it had to go through the quantum realm, which again, our eternal selves created the quantum realm. And the quantum realm is like a, a transistor, right? We have the transistors that are out on the post that take in a large amount of high voltage electricity. And if that high voltage electricity came directly into house, it would blow every single socket. So it has to go through that transistor to basically downgrade the electricity. So our mm -hmm. houses and our, our appliances can therefore assimilate it. Same thing for the quantum realm. The quantum realm is like the transistor and we created it. So, we, so our eternal self has all of our intentions, all of our desires, all of everything goes through that quantum realm and comes into the physical realm into fruition and comes in the physical realm to create this physical body. So again, there is no separation of this physical body to the energy that we would call aura around our body to the quantum field around us, which is actually more in the micro field out into the eternal field. It's all the same. The only difference is where you put your focus. So if my focus is here in the human body, then my, um, then the molecular structure is paying attention. My cells are paying attention to my energy, my thought form. 
if I put my focus out into my energy field, then the energy is a little bit lighter, brighter, right? A little bit faster moving, a little bit higher vibration. If I put my focus into the quantum field again, higher vibration, but the quantum field is not let's say a field like a donut around it. It's throughout everything. It's just more in the micro. And again, if I put my focus into the eternal realm, again, that's the highest vibration, but I can still look into my body. In essence, you want to, those who believe in med beds, you are in your own med bed and you can create healing at any given time just by the focus from your eternal realm. I don't think people know what med bed is. Oh, it, it's a med bed has been, um, rumored to exist. Um, and I'm not saying it does exist. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I, as much as I'm very much in the energetic world, I still am very skeptic when somebody says something happens until I see it and experience it, then I believe it, but the same note, but a med bed supposedly is something where you can lay down that's actual physical bed that you can lay down in and it can create all healing in an instantaneous, depend upon what type of healing you want. And again, I'm not saying it does or doesn't exist, yeah. but I'm saying, yes, it's been rumored, but anyway, you are inside your own uh, chamber of, of your eternal self to create healing in a given moment. Um, there, well, you know, there's somebody that's going to be listening here to this, and um, she had an experience with cancer, and she turned to herself in that kind of context, and she is completely clear of cancer, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what you're talking about, right? Mm hmm yeah, one of the one of the beautiful things that I I don't know if I downloaded or if I saw it from somebody I think it was a meme that actually I saw from someone else, which is, um, you don't have something on the order like you don't have to be fixed, you just have to realize you were never broken. Hmm. The program, yeah, because it's a program <laughs> that we feel and believe that we're broken and we're not. But we, somebody just, you know, kind of gave us that program. We, there's no victimhood here, guys. Victimhood is where you're not owning your power. You're giving your power away. So yeah. if someone such as, let me find a program, um, trying to not make it too personal here. Um, okay. <laughs> um, a program. So I, I injured my back back in 2008. I herniated my disc. I have no pain. Thank goodness to all the other things that I do, but nevertheless, my back is weak. So to me, that is a true program that I have bought into because I didn't do anything for seven years. And then after those seven years, when I finally healed and didn't have any pain, I was dealing now with the emotional and mental body starting healing that because when you're down, you know, flat on your back for seven years, you do have a lot of programming that go on there as well. Yes. Once I cleared that out, I still didn't really work with my body. So a lot of weakness and atrophy came in. So I programmed and my license is that of a physical therapy. So I have the program. I know I'm going to be atrophied and I know I'm going to be weak. So therefore, as I move, I know it's going to hurt. That is still a program that I agree to buy in on. And mm -hmm. if I went in and removed that program said, no, I'm strong, I'm healthy. Um, because again, I created my eternal self created this and just as well, it created perfection. Everything is perfection, whether it's an injury or not injury, it's still perfection on its level. Um, but it was, I can turn it around and basically make it. So I should probably work on that one. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something to work on. I tell you. And so many things come up and you're like, oh yeah. And then of course, you know, segue squirrel, you know, you forget about it. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, so basically everything that, you know, we all kind of have a belief or thought pattern that we have, the human being has the will, right? Uh, what do we want to experience? And basically to give you an example, um, in November of last year, I went ahead and just said, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and my income for December is going to be $10,000. And I don't make anywhere near around that guys. Um, and I was just, and I, I didn't have a, <laughs> yeah, not yet. And I didn't have a judgment with it. And that is so important. You've got to work on that. Whatever you want to focus on, whatever you want to bring in, you can't have a judgment on. Um, and to me, it just felt very neutral it was kind of just flowing. And I, but I thought about $10,000. I've seen $10,000. I know what $10,000 looks like not only physically, but in my checking account. Um, so I had a bunch of little 
different viewpoints of knowing what $10,000 looks like and feels like and knows to have. And I'm like, I know I'm going to have it. Don't know where it's going to come from, but I see it. Yep. $10,000, 10,000. My focus was on $10,000 more than 60% of my day. That is another key. And I'm giving you little keys, but I'm going to come around and actually just wrap around nice and smoothly guys. So your focus is your superpower. It's everybody's superpower. Um, and I'm going to come back to focus in a second, but nevertheless, I kept my focus on that close to 60% of the month. And I do believe, I kid you not, right after Christmas time, I was told that I was going to receive a large bonus that I was not expecting to get at all. And after I added everything up for the month, guess what I got? I was over $10,000. So yes, you can do this. So, so is that manifestation of creation? That is creation. So I was not basically, so again, as we said, you're right. Thank you for bringing that down. So manifestation is basically learn to get ourselves in alignment with the same vibration, et cetera, et cetera, and to attract. Creation is, as we just went ahead and um, thank you bringing, for bringing me back to point. Um, in creation, <laughs> as we already said, our eternal self focuses everything into this physical realm. So therefore you create everything in your field whether it's good, bad, neutral experience or something physical, you know, I created that I wanted a lighter, you know, and mm -hmm. so I thought I need a lighter in my house. So let's see here. What do I want? I want the one that's kind of automatic that easily can reach for longer objects. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to go on Amazon. And of course, everything is lightning speed in the creative world. And lo and behold, some point, because remember there's, there's no such thing as time past, present, future can basically experience right now, just no matter where you place your focus. So someone, of course, as we would look back, you know, 15 years ago, created this, right? But in my now moment, I wanted it. I went on Amazon. I found it. Hence, I created it to come into my food, come into fruition in my physical world and my physical experience. So that's just one example. So everything you can actually create by your focus. Um, I'm kind of, I am, I am kind of losing my, my okay, focus. So, you know, that, uh, that is very helpful. You mentioned the, um, to be careful, basically not to have a judgment. And also when we are working on creation or manifestation, I don't think many of us have heard that, you know, uh, a focus gauge, which you gave us, and that was 60%. Uh, you gave us a target place there. So I think that's really helpful too, because in our efforts to do this and, and to create, um, we're kind of going blind and, and uh, living in faith. But um, there also needs to be a little more depth and understanding. So um, the judgment um, is a great awareness to be of. And telling us that you were in a mindset of thinking about this for at least 60% during your day. Um, and then you mentioned the month that is very helpful for clarity. So let me go ahead and jump a little bit into the judgment aspect first. So um, let's just say, for instance, everyone, you know, everybody wants money. Who doesn't want money? And yeah. um, we, we know how to clear out the mindset um, the, the, the mental programs, you know, I'm sure a lot of us know how to do the tapping method and that's really good. You know, it helps clear out the mental body and the mental programming. Um, the, as Nikki mentioned earlier, I've downloaded, um, information on how to clear out the emotional body, which actually trumps the mental body because it's online first, but nevertheless, everything is a vibration, every mm -hmm. thought, every judgment, um, everything is a vibration and you got to remember this world and, um, you know, bringing a phone into your, your experience. This is simply a vibration, a, a pen again, is simply just a vibration of something I desired or something I wanted. And I brought it into my fruition into my life. So let's just say again, for instance, we have created a free runway, a clear runway to what we think we've cleared all the things about money, right? All the blocks of I'm not worthy of money. Um, I, I 
Can I have enough money? No. Yep. Clear that one. Money is only made for the 2%. Yep. Clear that one. Let's say you cleared all of the blocks that you know of when it comes to money. And man, you have a clear runway and you're like, all right, spirit's just going to bring that because spirit's not going to bring the money. You are now creating and seeing that money coming in. Okay. And it's all vibration in your field. And you're sitting here. Going, mm. oh, I see the money. Mm, yes, yes, yes. Dog barks next door. Oh, that's annoying. Ah, see the money. Dog barks again. Oh gosh, we need to shut up. Ah, see the money. See the money. Dog barks again. Oh my dear Lord, you're breaking up my concentration. Well, what's going on there? You have a negative judgment when it comes to the dog barking. And that is just vibration, negative vibration, lower vibration within your field. So it's similar to what we've already learned about manifestation, right? You want to bring your vibration up into the same vibration of what you're trying to attract. And if you're trying to attract money, what, which is what you're trying to create, creation is not a lower vibration. Creation is a higher vibration. But if you have a lower vibration in your field as well, what does your energy love to do? Create homostasis. So it comes down. So whether you're angry at the boss, you don't like your job, you, you know, you're uh, complaining because of the weather, whatever negative lower thought or emotional charge that you may have is still bringing your vibration down from that higher vibration of creation. So number one, really work on your pain. So work on number one, being an observer or a witness to your world and to your thoughts. Why your world? Because whatever comes to you, you are attracting. Um, what do I mean by that? <clears throat> if you have a cellular memory, emotional cellular memory, a charge in your body, let's say you have a charge in your body of being angry for whatever reason, right? Then a, you're going to attract a person with equal vibration coming to you and start being pissed off at you and angry. And what are you going to do? You're probably going to react because you already have the anger charge in you. And so before you know it, you're kind of arguing back and forth. And you're like, oh gosh, how did I, you know, why did I go and choose this? Versus if you're an observer and the person who's angry walks up to you and starts like yelling at you, and you're like, you know, before you get to that, you know, defensiveness, right? You go like, wait a minute, I'm observing this. He's coming to me or she's coming to me with anger. Hmm. I must have anger in my body. Okay. So I need to look at that. That's what these truly, this is what the mirrors of people coming into our life and different experiences are all about. Interesting. Yeah. So basically, when we see these people that come into our field and they're angry, then that's a good time, you know, to write down your little book or your mental mind of, I really need to re I need to reconnect to this moment and really find what was going around, but to really find what were the triggers, to really find where it came from. Now, that's more of the amagape process, but, you know, you can do a lot of that with tapping as well. And mm -hmm. so basically, you might go later on that day, I might go, okay, so anger. So he came to me angry because he felt I was infringing upon his, um, you know, property line. So that's, what is that? That basically is about infringing upon one space. Okay. So do I feel like I'm infringed upon my space? Well, yeah, actually I did. Cause my manager came to me and started talking to me something that wasn't my deal. And I'm still pretty pissed off about that. Okay. So then I'm going to think about that. Where do, now what's the next feeling that comes up with low self-worth. And then you just follow it and you follow it until you can clear it up and then tap out your little, um, whatever that particular program may be. So everything basically is a reflection. So what we're trying to do is bring our energy up into a higher vibration. And the way we do that is by releasing those lower vibrations that are in our body. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to leave you empty handed. So is there any other questions, Nikki, before I kind of get into an actual applicable creation mode? <laughs> Uh, no, I'm okay. pretty eager to hear this. <laughs> so a lot of us, I'm just going to use money as an example, because a lot of it, you know, we all just, who doesn't want more money and money's not bad. Money is simply energy. Um, so, you know, a lot of us may have asked at one time to win the lottery or to, you know, and have a million dollars, but have you ever seen a million dollars? I have, I have no idea what it looks like. I've never seen it in my account. Never seen it. So seen therefore, it account either. Go figure. <laughs> so basically what we're going to do is we're going to change a little bit of association. So for those of you who are in the far north or going into winter or coming out of winter, 
um, we can use different analogies. So, but for now, we're going to use the analogy of money to leaves. They're both green. So I live in Santa Barbara, California, and obviously it's green here all year round. So I can easily look out the, you know, the, my window where I'm driving, no matter what, and I can see millions of leaves, millions and millions of leaves. So I'm going to do this work for as long as it takes until I literally can program myself that all those leaves are dollar bills. All those leaves are money. Man, there's a lot of money. Look at that money. That is an amazing amount of money, right? So when you can switch yourself to that um, association, you know, that, oh my gosh, there's a, I can see a lot of money, a lot of money surrounding me. This is pretty darn cool. Now, for those of you that are still in the snow country, you can look at snowflakes if you wish. You know, look at the snowflakes coming down. Look at the snowflakes that are on the ground. There is so much money. You can, you know, find anything that you have a plethora of around you and just make it, uh, just this, make the association that into money, okay? So once you have that completely down pat, and that may take a week, that may take 21 days, but nevertheless, do, don't go into the second step until you have that association down. Okay. The second step is reaching out and feeling and touching the money. Oh, I can, that money's mine. I can grab a whole handful of leaves. Money, it's all mine. I can pour that money on top of my head. I can feel the money. I can, um, this money is in my house. This money is, you know, in my backyard. It is mine. I can feel it. It's tangible. So now we're making it into it's tangible to into your life. What we're really doing is reprogramming your brain. So again, you stay with step two until you can basically make it so that it is tangible. Yep, I got it. There's, you know, I mean, I'm looking out, I can go outside right now and I can touch probably good, you know, thousand dollars right there. Now the third step takes a little bit of science. So okay. what do plants actually give us human beings? Main proper thing, main thing that we need all the time. Oxygen, oxygen. right, mm -hmm. oxygen, right? So plants give us oxygen. Now, for a second, do you ever, 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 ever in your life, do you ever think there might not be enough air for my next breath? I might be running out. We don't, right? We just trust and we know that it's there. And what is air? Energy. That's all it is. And we have the program that there's plenty of air and it always will be there. It's just energy. It's just another program. So. Money gives us air, money gives us oxygen. So now I want you to extrapolate and move. I'm breathing in money. Money is a part of my being. I am breathing out money, I'm breathing in money. Money is energy. Look at that, you can't see it, right? We can't see air, but we know air is there. So just work on, again, reprogramming yourself with the association, now money is air and you're breathing in that air and you're breathing out that air. And that's exactly how the flow of all energy goes, guys. Money, energy comes in, energy goes out. Energy comes in and energy goes out. We always want an equal amount of energy coming in and energy going out. So once you get the association down pat of I'm breathing in energy, then the next association will be money is energy. So now you have taken this big, huge, unobtainable thought of a million dollars or winning the lottery. And you've brought it down to something which you can really understand, which is energy. Money is energy. And where does everything stem from that is created in my world? Energy. Through us. Yeah. Energy. Everything in our world is, is energy, but it's all created through our eternal being, through ourselves that comes into the um, physical realm. And so when you basically start to realize, oh, this is energy, right? Again, then you can start to smile because I am energy. I, I mean, right now I can blow, I've got flowers next to me, but they're, they're probably gonna, but you can blow on anything, right? You can see the energy coming from your body, leaving the body. So you create energy all the time. You have infrared consistently coming off your body, which is a light. That is energy. Um, so yes, there's a lot of physical evidence that we are full of energy. We're electromagnetic beings. We're an electromagnetic field of plasma. 
and energy is everywhere. You just have to really twist your brain around realizing that, oh, money or anything that what you might want to create is energy, but it has to stem from you in the ultimately, right? Of like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and have $10,000 this month. It's not a question. It just is. That's what I'm going to choose to create this month is $10,000. I don't need to know where it comes from. I don't need to know what source. I don't need to go look at, my, you know, pull up all my, um, uh, if you're an investor, right? Pull up all my investments. Go, okay, you know, is it coming from here? No. In fact, don't do that because you're actually limiting it. You're, you're putting it in a box and you're limiting the space in which it can come from. Just, I know uh, $10,000 is coming my way. It's already here. I, I feel this is fun and I can feel the energy coming through me. I am that energy and I'm focusing that energy right there. Now, did I, during that month, did I also watch my thoughts and my feelings? And did I also, was I witness to myself? Yes, because I want to be very aware of all of a sudden, if I feel irritated or aggravated or hurt, so I yeah. can go and look into that program to release that lower vibration energy. That is so key. That is so key. Yes. Yes, it is. It is very key. Um, there's something else there. Oh, Lordy. Um, hang on, let me collect my thoughts, guys. Sorry. While she's doing that, I'm just going to give you a helpful hint. Um, sometimes, I think the word is esophageal. Sometimes when you look, like especially if you look on YouTube, you can find music that you can play at different hertz. That'll help you get there as well. I don't, I don't really remember. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sure a minute we'll go. Oh yeah. Um, so, oh, there we go. So, you know, like how I'm sure everyone on here doesn't has a meditation practice of some sort. Yes. And this also helps you get to the space of creation. So honestly, guys, the key, the number one key of creation is accepting, acknowledging, and being the creator that you are. That's all it is. So that means breaking down those barriers between God, higher self, soul, spirit, human being, breaking down those barriers and knowing I am all of the above. My eternal self is this. God is this, right? It's just a lower, denser vibration. Lower does not mean bad. It's just another way of experiencing life, right? Mm -hmm. But it all comes down to empowering oneself and acknowledging the truth that you are what created universe you are what created the worlds that once you you acknowledge and hold that bit of information you are now empowered and that's where we're moving to and it's not going to take overnight it's not going to take a week it's not going to take it may take a month but nevertheless we are all moving toward it you know can i go ahead and go I want a ham and cheese sandwich. You know, obviously, no, I'm not there. You know, I don't think anybody's there yet, but I guarantee, but I know that we will be because that is, so fourth dimension is learning the process of being a creator. Because obviously, you know, I know myself 20 years ago, um, you know, I was stuck in the drama of the society and what was being played on TV. And I know sometimes when I would daydream, I would daydream, okay, what if I got in a car accident? Oh gosh, what would that look like? And then that would happen, you know, those are the thoughts that we cannot have when we're in the fifth dimension because the fifth dimension is pure creation. You mm -hmm. can't have those lower vibrations, one going into the fifth. You just, you, you won't, you won't, you're you, basically think of ourselves as a helium balloon that has like a string and it's tethered to a whole bunch of weights. And all those weights are lower vibrations that are being held in your cellular body. And every time you let go of one of those weights, that healing balloon rises up a little bit higher. And let's say your ceiling is fifth dimension. If you still have a whole bunch of weights on that helium balloon, it's not gonna go ahead and hit the ceiling, is it? We have to have, bring all those lower um, vibrations off in order to get up to fifth. But in the fifth is pure creation. In the fourth, we're practicing. We're trying to feel, oh, let's not think of lower thoughts. Let's think of higher thoughts and better things come our way. We can create different things and it's pretty cool. But yeah. as I was, as I was saying earlier, when it comes to meditation, a lot of us have a meditation and, and um, I, maybe you're different from this. I'm not definitely saying you're like this at all, but a lot of times when we do our meditation, what do we do? We go into a room 
or we tell our kids to go outside and leave us alone, whatever it may be, but we kind of create a space, right? We walk into that space, we put on our music. Some people may like, you know, some incense or some sage. Ah, we get in our space and, you know, we sit there quietly and we just get into that space of alignment and allowing, and it's beautiful. And I know we all love that. And, you know, after whatever period of time that's correct for you for meditating, what do we do? Then we open our eyes, we shut off the music, we step out of that room when we close the door and we go back our life. All right, now we got to wash dishes. We got to clean clothes. We got to go and talk to those six people, right? Why are you closing the door between your aligned meditative practice and your world? Mm -hmm. Stop. Yes. When you go into that world, great. Go into the world, meditate, but do not create a wall. Do not create a room. Carry that energy throughout your day as long as you can. Stay in alignment. Yes. And you can use your particular vibration, your particular mood um, as a barometer, as Abraham Hicks says, as a barometer as to whether you're in alignment. If all of a sudden you get angry and frustrated, well, guess what? You just came out of alignment and you're in lower vibration. Not a right, not a wrong, just an observation. I'm observing myself. Oh, I'm frustrated. Okay, why am I frustrated? Well, I'm frustrated because the kids just dropped a whole bunch of milk and I do not want to clean it up and I've got the dishes to do. Okay, so you're overwhelmed. And you need to take a time out and take a nurturing moment to yes. replenish yourself. Yes, so I, that's, call that, I call that staying in my center. Yeah. You know, um, it's definitely a learned and practiced discipline. It is. It is. I took, I think 2020 was my year for doing that, where I would meditate in the morning and I would jump in my car because I was still, my daughter was still going to, to um, uh, work. She's homeschooled, but we're connected with the charter where she only went two days a week, you know, we still got up in the morning and I really made a point. I'm still in my meditation. I'm still in my practice. I'm still mm -hmm. allowing, I'm still opening. I'm still being observer to the world. And I'm just really witnessing. Now being a surrendering to the world guys, you are not giving up your energy. You're actually making yourself open to receive more energy. It's when you give up, that's when you're giving your energy to something else. So literally surrendering, you're opening up and you're allowing, and I would just do that. And sometimes I'd be able to stay in that, that meditative state um, until after I dropped off my daughter. And then all of a sudden I realized, oh, I'm not in that meditative state again. So I stop and I take a moment, just in my, you know, not driving, of course, and just, you know, okay, get back into that and do it again. And it's just, again, it's a habit. Your body's not used to being in that alignment of high vibrational energy. And it just takes habit of going there and continually going there until it's a habit for you doing being there almost 24 seven. But it's great as you're getting there. It's like, it's a wonderful journey. So here I kind of mentioned about five different things when it comes to the difference of creation versus manifestation. No, there is not one direct line. We are a complex being. We are made up of many different DNA from many different species. And that's why we can vibrate from 3.0 all the way up to 8.0 we're a unique species. We can create things and bring in thing, uh, bring anything into fruition into this physical realm. That's why our focus has been manipulated since the beginning of humanity by other species or other lower vibrational beings because we create the world with our focus. All we have to do is be manipulated to look over here and this problem is gonna happen. So really be diligent to your focus. It is yours, it is solely yours. It is your sovereign right. And you're a sovereign being of unbelievable eternal life and start using it to the positive for yourself and for the world. So yes, acknowledge who you are, embrace yourself, empower yourself, um, clear out those lower vibrations, um, really keep your meditative mode and alignment with you as long as you can and keep practicing that to your in it for as long as you possibly forever, whatever you want to call it. And then again, your superpower, your focus. Your focus, focus, focus is what brings everything into actual fruition, but has to have the support of the previous. I love that superpower is my focus. I'm going to get t-shirts made. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get night shirts. My superpower is my focus. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I just a complete side note, guys, uh, really different um, because I have ADHD. 
And um, I was one of my clients one time, he was seeing a psychologist and the psychologist told him that he had ADD. And I'm like, why? And he says, because every time I come into his office, I can see all of the, um, his, his frames, how they're just slightly off. And he goes, so I'd go in and I put it so, so it was equal with, you know, the, the ceiling. And I'm like, well, yeah, of course. And he goes, no, because he, go, he goes, yes, because I, I do the same thing. And he says, yes, but most people don't see that. And I said, then why aren't they labeled when we have a superpower and we see things differently? We see things where they're not lined up, where we can have many thoughts going through our head and multitask. So yeah. if, you do, if, you, if anybody's ever labeled you with anything, just remember, they're putting you in that superpower um, category. That is your superpower because we're not like people who don't have that ability and, and not saying they're wrong or right or better or nothing like that. But I'm just saying, because a lot of times labels have been meant to put out to kind of like, oh, we have to fix that and make that go away. No, we don't. You can control these things. It's just a matter of learning. So in other words, I know a lot of people ADHD and it's out of control, right? But nevertheless, this is your superpower. So embrace it. It's not something to be um, feeling bad about. <laughs> that's a wonderful example. So I think that's pretty much it. I hope that was helpful for everyone. I hope that wasn't too scattered and all over the place. I didn't yeah. have time to make my notes. So I'm really sorry. We had a little bit of a issue yesterday evening. So I didn't get, I wasn't able to get focused. Yes. Well, you know, you're very professional and you, you're so knowledgeable. I don't think you really needed any notes. And, um, you know, I really have to work on accepting and acknowledging the creator part. Um, you know, I think you've given us so many good things. It's just hard to say, you know, um, what was so, all the things that were so wonderful, you know, and, and giving us the steps of seeing the money, you know, seeing the leaps and, and seeing that all as money and then feeling it, um, turning it into tangible. Those are such um, simple yet big and effective uh, manners of going about. Um, and I think down the road, the people that are listening to this are going to realize the level of um, intelligence or the level of wisdom that you've given us here in a simple conversation. Thank you very much. It was wonderful. Absolutely. So just to kind of recap, so manifestation is where you believe the power is actually outside of you and it's going to kind of come into you. Creation is realizing everything outside of you is you. You've created everything. We as together, we have co-created everything and realizing that you are the power. You can't, you've, look at, look at right now, right now, just for a moment, look around you go, I created all of this. Wow. Yeah. This is pretty cool. I'm pretty dang powerful. Right? <laughs> and really acknowledge where it comes from. Yeah, I mean, oh my gosh, dang, I'm a genius. <laughs> yes. well, you know, when I introduce myself now, I tell people I am living my dream. Yes. You know? Yes, you really have to watch your thoughts and what you say. And I'm sure Nikki's basically talked to that many a time. Because, uh, you know, a lot of times we're programmed through our parents of I'm not enough. Um, I can't do that. Uh, oh, no, no, I never could go there. Um, et cetera, et cetera. Even the other day I caught myself, which was great. I love catching myself. Um, I don't like leaving my daughter. We've been together pretty much 24 seven her whole entire life. She's 17. And with the world as crazy as it is, I'm like, I don't want to leave her. And yet I'm an opportunity to go down to Puerto Rico or not Puerto Rico, um, Costa Rica in November, complete paid free trip. And I was like, Oh, I don't want to leave her. I don't know. You know, I mean, she's got great people to stay with. Don't get me wrong. But it was like, oh, no, I just don't know if this is a good idea. And I'm like, Wendy, you're letting fear control you. Oh, well, that's got to go. <laughs> <laughs> On my way. <laughs> exactly. Because why I create my world, I create my environment, you know, for any one of the news sources that say this is where we're going. Even I see some um, most unfortunate makes me so heart sick when I see some um, spiritual leaders or spiritual groups that are like, oh, you've got to go ahead and um, 
you know, be a prepper because this is where we're headed. And this is the, this is this, you know, where we're going to, this things are going to look bad here, look bad here, look bad here. It's like, whoa, whoa, I create my world. You don't. But if I believed in him, he's taking, he's manipulating my focus and that yeah. will be my world. So really pay attention again, because you do create your own world. Yes. And we do get comfortable in some areas that aren't uh, functional for us. And it's a quiet place for us to be. It's a, a comfortable place because we've known it for so long. So we really, um, like you said, we really have to see. You really have to be able to see the emotions. Like, like the, I mean, this was definitely didn't say the time in which we continue to sleep. This is the time in which we wake up and yeah. we become more conscious. And conscious is basically bringing your energy back into your body and viewing it from there because everything else is an extension of you. And that's being awake to that. Well, let's leave it on that note. That's a wonderful yes. place to go and keep it with you for the rest of the day. Thank you very much, Wendy. That was very good. I'm really glad. I'm just, I hope it was uh, not too scattered. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it was. No, it was, it's a big subject, you know, and you handled it quite well. And you kept bringing it in, bringing it in so that we had things to grasp on. Because, you know, it's like, it's, it's as big as the universe, really. And, and you brought it down into a place where we could take little nibbles and we could take new ownership of it and we could bring out our parameters of understanding as well. So you did a very good job. Thank you. I'm really glad to hear that it came through in a linear fashion of some sense. <laughs> Great. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me, Nikki. I really appreciate it. And everybody, I'm part of the group. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out and I'll just kind of answer them as I see them. And uh, I really appreciate it. Nikki and I became friends, gosh, a little over a month ago, I think. And it was kind of like one of those, um, those soul remembrances, you know, where it's like, yes. oh. Yes, I felt her and I attached myself to her and I wasn't going to let her go. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're here to change the world, girl. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. Yes. So we're, we're, she's here to stay with us, hopefully. And um, also, maybe you can post a link where they can get in touch with you personally. Um, we're going to post this on the page now. And then, um, and then Wendy will post a link. Um, if you I'll, do, I'll put it in the comment section. So for anyone who wants to get in touch with me, I'm on Facebook. I'm also on YouTube, but best place to get me is on Facebook. I'm on there like all the time. Um, yes. So I'll just put in the comment section below if you do want to go ahead and connect with me. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Nikki. All righty. Bye-bye. <laughs>